And yet again, another very special episode. Thanks for tuning in, ladies, and mostly gentlemen. Today we have the unboxing of a new motor dyno. I'm John Holmes with Holmes Hobbies. Thanks for tuning in today. I just received a motor dyno from Mini Pro. You can find their website at minipro.com or the link down below. Currently, they make a few inertial style dynos, and this is one of their inertial dynos. And there are some pluses and negatives to inertial style dynos, which we will talk later in the episode about. But first, what we're gonna do is unbox this thing and see just what it is and just how well they packaged it. So, pretty tight in the box. There's a little bit of room, but it looks like they have more boxes inside the box. So we got uh, invoice, which I'm just gonna throw that to the side there. There we are. All right, so we can take a little peek inside this box and you can see they have a fancy box for the motor dyno itself. And then a little other box for I think the accessories that I purchased. I really don't care that it's inside a fancy box because I'm just gonna tear it apart and probably not keep the box anyway, but it looks pretty slick. It'd be nice on a shelf, maybe uh, you know in a hobby shop or something like that. It would look good on a shelf, which sells products in a hobby shop. So, let's get to it. This is our main dyno. I'm probably gonna have to assemble it, and just in case, if we look at it, this is what it looks like. We have the inertial flywheel connected via a belt to our test motor. And what an inertial dyno does is assumes that you have this load and it spins up that load as fast as it can. And then it uses essentially a formula to say, I know how much load this is. I know how long you took to spin that motor up. And with data such as voltage and amp draw, it can deduce all of your torque curves and your efficiency curves and your power curves from there. So pretty neat, pretty neat. This will come in handy. I already have a few dynos, but they're kind of limited use. Uh, they don't either have a very good load cell to them or they have such a small inertial flywheel that it really doesn't give me good information. So I figured a new dyno would be a good purchase. I would normally classify this under the stupid purchases of the month, but I don't think this one's actually going to be a stupid purchase. This will be very useful. Y'all like my knife? Yeah, it's real fancy. A piece of sheet metal. Uh, I'm, yeah, real proud of that. Real proud of that. What kind of knives do y'all like to carry? Because obviously I forgot mine today. Usually I carry a Shrade. All right, yeah, so we got some accessories. Extra motor mount. This will allow me to have two motors. You can run one motor, put your second motor in. When the first one is done testing, hot swap them out in a sense and keep on going. It's a little faster if you have two mounts. This is a higher current sensor and also a sensor that has better uh, resolution to it as well. So this will allow us to get better data, also let us get higher amp draws than the stock one. And yeah, here's the piece that is very important. We have a very heavy steel flywheel. This stuff was all very well packed. Definitely was packed well. All right. Now, since there is this little cross, I'm assuming they may have a tack sensor on there, an RPM sensor. It could be located anywhere on the dyno itself, but uh, that would be my assumption is why they have that little, that little cross. That way it can count how many pulses go by. It probably has a little light source. I'm making a lot of assumptions before I actually open up this. So it's probably time to open this up. MiniProUSA.com. I do believe a MiniPro.com is also good because that's the website that I went to. And it looked like the website I bought it from, but MiniProUSA is probably just their arm here in the USA. Located in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. But more than likely this is made in China. Let's see if we can find that on the back. Nope, no information. But more than likely, as most things are in the world, made in China, it's gonna be my assumption. I make a lot of assumptions sometimes. How about you? I just ride on waves of assumptions. 
And usually it doesn't come to bite me in the ass, but you know, you know about assumptions. Oh, a nice quick start guide, very succinct quick start guide. Uh, so essentially you go to their website and download the instructions. You download the software and driver onto a computer, which I didn't bring today. So obviously I was not quite prepared. And then be sure that you turn it off before you plug it in. That sounds like a pretty good thing to tell your customers. All right. And then of course they want us to get on the email list, like them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and all of the other things. Uh, so, and then it gives a nice little layout of all of the things that we should find in the package, just in case there is a problem with packaging, which there are, you know, humans involved in this. So there may be errors, errors, errors. All right. So we got more bags of stuff. We've got the stock current sensor. I will go ahead and show you the big beefy difference between the current sensor that I purchased and the current sensor that comes with it. Look at that. Huge, huge difference. So this little current sensor that comes with it, you can see the little bitty resistor. And what they do is they pass current by the resistor and then they judge the voltage drop on the system. And through that, you can get your amperage out of it. This big beefy current sensor is a Hall effect sensor in most likelihood. Let's see if I can see any part numbers. It does not. And there's some more little uh, supporting components on the back, which does tell me that yes, this is more than likely a Hall effect sensor. And the current will pass all the way through this Hall effect sensor, and then it will have a little voltage bias. It's just like a normal Hall effect sensor in your motor, uh, pretty much. When there is a change in an electronic field and a magnetic field around it, then it'll change a voltage bias one way or another. In a normal Hall sensor that we would have in a motor, it would go from zero to five volts. This one probably goes zero to five, but in a more linear fashion as the current ramps up. But as you can tell, Big beefy traces on there. This one is definitely gonna allow us a lot more current without just going up in smoke. So good thing that I got that because my motors are very powerful and they need all of the current sensor that we can afford. So a temperature sensor for the motor loop. That's nice because we don't want our motor to overheat. And another little uh, dealy bob for our motors. Some people call them motor mounts. I prefer to call them dealy bobs. We got a belt, a belt for the motor dyno and all sorts of other things. The flywheel uh, sub-assembly, flywheel-based sub-assembly. And then we have what is pretty much the meat and potatoes of our dyno. This, this pretty guy right here. So essentially our motor will probably mount, you can see on the bottom here, we have this mounting plate, our flywheel subassembly, assembly, slub, slub assembly, yes, sub assembly will mount to this and then our motor plate will mount to that. And then our flywheel or our belts and little pulleys will mount to those and it'll all mount together and be a fully functioning dyno. Uh, maybe you can see in the video, but essentially our motor will turn this flywheel and as it turns it faster and faster and faster, it's putting more power into it. And that is how the entire situation works. Pretty simple, pretty foolproof. There's not a lot to go wrong on these. Uh, on the backside, you can see uh, just all kinds of funky business there. We have some dip switches to maybe change the programming. More than likely when I change the flywheel weight, I'm gonna have to hit a dip switch on there or something like that. Again, I'm making a lot of assumptions here, but that's what I do. I just fly blindly through life making assumptions. All right, and we got some, some external ports here. So they're gonna be our temperature sensors, probably a tachometer on there, a few other little dealy bobs here. And hey, this is a 3D printed part. You don't often see 3D printed parts on commercial items like this. And I would assume that they did a 3D printed part on here because the tooling cost for this one little plastic piece is going to end up being extremely expensive. You know, uh, if you get a, a cheap, uh, a cheap injection molding tool made or whatever you, whatever it's called, tell me down below because I'm I'm coming up blank on what it's called uh, for the injection molding. But you know, it's going to be maybe two grand, three grand for a cheap one, and ten grand for a nice injection mold. 
So what they did is they just 3D printed this. It's just a shroud. It doesn't actually support anything. It makes it look better because everything else is CNC machined. There, there's nothing that I see. There's nothing else that is not CNC machined on this. So to tool up another two to 10K for that one little plastic piece, it seems kind of wasteful, especially when the 3D printing is gonna do just a fine job for this. And Rin really, who's gonna be looking at it? And, oh, these, these, these layer lines look a little big to me. I don't know if this is a quality component because of this. Yeah, it, it's just not gonna happen. It, this is a perfect example of when you would use 3D printing. And I'm totally off on a unrelated topic now because I'm looking at this dyno and, and uh, this is gonna be fun. This will be really fun. So I do know that there's a couple of downsides to a, an inertial dyno. An inertial dyno or a inertial dyno? I don't know. Maybe it's an inertial dyno. But the biggest thing is that you are assuming that there is a certain load on your motor. But in this particular case, we have a little bit of connection in between them. We have a uh, belt and we have some pulleys. We also have bearings that support it. So if our bearings change in quality, say they degrade some, that's going to increase the load on our motor, but the dyno won't actually account for that. Again, with the belt, if the belt tension is a little higher, or if we go to the wider belt to support a higher torque motor, or if the pulleys are wearing out a little bit, that is all going to put a little bit higher load on the motor, but an inertial dyno will not be able to account for it. And the only way to account for that is a load cell, which is pretty much like what you would have inside of a scale that you step on and it reads your weight. A load cell is going to read the torque coming off of the motor housing through a little torque arm, a little lever that presses it. You now these little motor mounts, if they were mounted on a pivot, they could actually be the torque arm themselves. This one does not have a load cell on it. So we don't get the benefit of that. However, I did hear that MiniPro is working on a load cell version in the future, and I will be working very closely with them as closely as I possibly can to get one as soon as I can, because they're a little bit more reliable over the long term. On this one, as long as we make sure our belt tension is even and our bearings are in good condition, we can pretty much assume that this is going to be a very stable dyno over the long term, but we do have to pay attention to some of the finer details to make sure that we're not getting some inefficiencies put into the system that are not accounted for. So I think I have talked about so many things that are not even related to this dyno while looking at it. I have all the parts laid out for me and I didn't even bring all the right tools to put it together because I didn't read the instructions first. So I think we're going to call this a good episode. If you do have any more questions about this, please comment down below and let me know what you think or what you have questions about and I will get to them for you. And otherwise, I certainly appreciate you tuning in. This has been a fun episode and I can't wait to dive into it. On the next episode, we will be testing motors on the dyno, hopefully. If it doesn't work, then we'll also be making an episode about it not working, but I don't think that'll be the case. So thanks for tuning in today. Have a good one.